I'm about to attempt my first ever modelling cliff face on this bit of styrofoam or polystyrene if you're over in the UK. Never done this before, but I do have a plan. I'm going to use this utility knife, a little cordless dremel thing and some attachments to carve in some cracks and lines on my cliff face. And then if there's any obvious manufactured lines like where it, the styrofoam joins, then I can use some either plaster cloth, plaster cloth, sculpt mold or just plaster of Paris to fill that in. Didn't say it was a good plan. Hello YouTubes, I've been staring at this bit of styrofoam for a week now. Kind of intimidated because, as I said before, I've never done this before. But you know what, there's a million different ways to do it and none of them are wrong. So, what I will warn you is, whatever I do here, it's going to look really bad at first. In fact, they all look pretty bad from what I see on YouTube until they're actually painted. So. You know what, let's give it a blast. So my plan is to carve diagonal lines rather than just straight across, just to give it a bit more realism, I guess, because not everything in life is pure flat. Ugh, let's give it a shot. We'll start, we'll start here, why not? i just switch this on. Oh, too deep. Right. Note to self, don't make straight lines. actually looking too bad. I was expecting a complete disaster. Now I'm specifically angling, let me switch this off. You can see obviously there's a 90 degree angle there and I'm specifically doing it that way rather than that way so that it creates the shadow effect underneath. I know I sound really like I know what I'm doing but I really don't, making this up as I go along. Yeah I think you can see from that sort of angle the sort of texture I'm going for. So I'll keep at it for a little bit. I want to get rid of as much of the the flat surface as possible, but I want to leave some of it of it obviously. Right, we'll see you in a minute. looking bad. I'm just going to take a little edge. I don't want this top edge to be quite so sharp. So I'm just going to round that a little bit. So I'm actually really, I'm really happy with this so far. Now, don't worry about this section along here. I'm going to, uh, uh, you know what, I'll tell you about that later. I've got other plans for this section here. And also this section along here. Anything below that is going to be hidden by the, the track anyway. But this section here, I do have specific plans. So I'm not putting any texture on that because it would be a waste of time. But no, I think that's looking pretty good. So what I think I'll do, I'll brush all that down, get rid of all the debris, which there isn't a lot of, which is surprising. Brush that off. Well, 
brush all this down, get rid of the wee hairy bits. And then I think we'll just cover it in some paint for now. Well, not for now, I mean first stage, cover it in a base dark coat. This is going way too easy. Let's throw some paint at it. So I'm going to start with black, but I'm going to water it down. So I've got half a cup of water. I'm going to pour quite a lot of this. I've got two bottles of this. It's just cheapy stuff because I want to go for a more of a slate color cliff face. I don't want it to really be brown. There will be some brown aspects of it, but again, I know I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I really don't. So I'm going to squidge half a bottle of this in. And the reason I'm watering it down is I don't want to ruin or cover up all the lovely detail that I've just created. What a mess. Let me mix this up. I need bigger stirring sticks. Right, let me splodge this all over the entire scene. So I'll let that dry, give it another coat, oh another another pointer. The reason I'm using black is to create the shadows and all the little cracks. Uh, it's only going to be for the crack section. It's going to be different colours which I have yet to decide on. Anyway let me get another coat on, let it dry and we'll hopefully get to the fun stuff. So that's dry, well, almost dry. It's as dry as my patience will allow. So now I'm gonna start adding some paint. I've decided that since this has been carved out of the mountainside, it's not gonna be your regular rugged, aged for a thousand years rock. It's gonna be look, it's gonna look a bit more manufactured. So I'm gonna go for a sort of gray blue slate look. So it'll be predominantly the gray, splash of blue, mix it together, might need to add a little bit of black. Just for now, I'll be adding various little bits of colour and highlights later on, but let's get a coat of this on, or whatever I come up with. I have no idea of what colour this is going to turn out. I may have to even add some white to this. And possibly a bit of water as well, just to thin it down. Again, I don't want to make it obvious that there's paint, you know what I mean? I want a more natural look. <laughs> That's not bad. I need a lot more paint though. These bottles are tiny. Just a couple of drops of the blue. It's not bad, it's a wee bit, it's a wee bit light for my liking. 
I'll try some more blue and if that doesn't work I'll add some black. Should have paid, paid attention in primary school. They told you all about mixing colours and what makes what. That's definitely not going to be dark enough. Let's add a wee bit of black. It's all about trial and error. Oh, that's a lot of black. Oops. Where does the black go? This grey paint is brutal. I'm going to add a wee bit of water, it is quite thick. More black. Oh, that's getting to be more the colour I was. I'm so messy. Yeah, that's more like the colour I was looking for. Just a sort of slate grey. We hint more blue, I think. Yeah, I think that'll work. And again, it is quite, quite watery. But I don't want it getting thick and blobby. Right, we'll try this in a little section first, and if it's wrong, I can adjust it. Okay, let's give this a go. Now, I'm going to try and just paint in this sort of direction. There's no point painting in that way then, I cover up all the little shadows I just created, so... Ah, give it a shot. And I'm covering a whole lot with this because the highlighting stuff will come later. I'm going to have to increase my angle a little bit because it's a bit too like a zebra at the moment. But I still don't want to completely cover all the black, so maybe this sort of angle. not really doing what I was expecting or what I would like, but I'm going to let it dry. There's no point just continually flogging a dead horse. Let it dry and then see how it looks when it's dry and not shiny and then we can try something else. Grey layer is now dry and it's dried a bit darker than I was expecting, which isn't a bad thing. Time for more paint. So I'm going to try a technique I saw somewhere a while ago and what I have to do is wet the area and then splodge on some of this I'm going to be using, what is it, golden brown texture lights and in certain spots and then kind of blend it into certain areas I'll start with a small area first shall I? Just in case Because I don't want it to be like completely obvious that a section is this colour. You'll see what I mean when I do it. Right, 
So that's nice and wet. A little bit of paint on the brush. Dip it in the water and kind of splodge it in areas randomly. And then use another brush, also wet. I think the secret to this specific technique was to keep the brush wet. Less is more and all that. Yeah, if you if it catches your eye, then there's too much paint. You know what I mean? At least that's the theory behind this, I believe. I'm going to step back from this, let it dry, and see if I'm going to continue all the way around. So I just went ahead and did the whole lot. Because, you know what, if it doesn't work, I'll just paint over it and start again. Okay, next thing I want to do is grab some... Chocolate brown. No, that's not dark enough. I need a dark brown. And I'm going to go do a similar sort of thing. But with a bit less watering down this time. And then after that, I'm going to be adding some green. So, hold on to your pants. I have no idea if this is going to work. I've got one more layer of paint to go on and that would be some white dry brushing. So I need to wait for this all to dry completely. And I'll need to ask my wife about the dry brushing. I've not done it before, but that's just add some highlights to the top edge of all the, the, the rock layer edges. You know what I mean? So while we're waiting for that to dry, let's get started on the area at the top of the cliff where there's going to be a sort of platform memorial thing. I haven't quite decided what's going on it yet, but there will be some flags. So my plan was to cut a strip of this foam board off, and that's going to be the wall around the top to stop people falling. Ah, death, right? So I went ahead and cut that, and it looks like this. And I basically just folded little sections which actually works pretty good. That was really just to make the curve, but now I've got these sort of natural little lines. Anyway, that will go about there. In front of the wall, I'm going to glue, well, just put glue down and then do some static grass around here. Maybe make some little grass tufts here and there. And then behind there, I'll use another section of this board to make the sort of platform and there'll be some steps there and then the flag po poles in the middle. Uh, I probably need to just continue this wall along there, stop people falling. And then on that side, there's going to be a sort of handrail that goes all the way down at the side of a little access road. So let me fire ahead and get that done and get them painted just a sort of off-white colour.
Okay then, this is it, like it or not. One more coat of paint, which will be the dry brushing of the white to give it some highlights. I'm going to do this section with it up the way so that I've got access because I'm going to be coming down at this sort of angle. Okay, I could just completely ruin everything I've just done, but if I never try it, I'll never know and I'll never improve. So, apparently, you get some paint on the brush and then wipe the paint off the brush and then completely dry it on a towel so that there's virtually no paint on the brush and then just brush it. I think this brush is actually too stiff. Let me find a softer one. This one. This is just a cheapie from... Uh, what's it from? Home Depot? You know those really cheap disposable brushes? That could be a bad idea then if things are going to fall off. Oh, it'll add to the texture, right? Right, let's try again. Mm, too much paint in the brush. I think it's working. I think you've just got to be careful not to get too carried away and put too much on at once. I think. Remember, I've never done this before. Proceeds to put too much on at once. So I'm really just trying to catch the edges of the the sticky out bits of the rock. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't worry about the bottom bit, that's getting covered. I'm going to stop getting a bit carried away, let that dry and see what the end result looks like and then we can move on to the next exciting bit. I don't know if it's exciting but certainly the next bit. Well I've been staring at this all day and I can't tell if it's any good or total garbage. Maybe somewhere in between. So let us continue for now with a little bit of grass all around the top and whatever I'm going to do down there. But let's get the grass done first and get my little wall on. Actually, talking of the little wall, which is over here, I'll give you a bit of a close-up because what I think I might do... Remember I said I folded the little sections all the way along? I might run a bit of a, a dark wash down all those little creases and see if that adds a little bit more depth. So I'll try that first and then we'll get on with the, the glue and some static grass along the top edge. This is my DIY static grass applicator made from one of those fly zappers. 
Now, normally they have two AA batteries, but I've upgraded this to a nine volt battery. You know, those little square ones that you used to put in calculators. So we'll see, makes, see if it makes any difference. Right, a little bit of glue. This blue line here signifies where the wall is going to be. So I don't really want to go any further than that. That's plenty to be on with. What do you think? Too much glue? Probably. Uh, no harm. Just means it's going to take a bit longer to dry. Right, let's give that a go. Put my little pin in there. My little grounding clip. And hopefully I don't blow myself up. Here we go. Unfortunately, that's not working. I must have broken it. Oh, great. You know what? It'll do for a first a first round. I can always put more glue on it and go over it when I fix this thing. But yeah, I've definitely broken it. Wonderful. In the interest of continuity, I just decided to slap on some of this Woodland Scenics foliage. Just glue it on, stick it on. I guess it looks quite nice, to be honest. Let that dry, shake it off, put it back in the bag, and then we can go on with this bit at the bottom. But you're just dying to know what I'm going to do, because it's not going to be grass. Okay, I'll stop keeping you in suspenders. I am going to put this gravel along the bottom. And I think I'm going to use this one. Purpose being, it's... Kind of meant to signify excess rock that's fallen down and rested along the bottom there, and I think that is the best, the best colour for the job. The camera makes it look completely different, but it's kind of, it's kind of the closest if you compare it to that one. You see what I mean? So we're going to we're going to glue along that edge, sprinkle this stuff stuff on top, let it dry, and then that should be that section done, apart from the platform at the top. I think I'm done. Now, I do understand for many of you who have been doing this for years, this was probably quite painful to watch, but I had to start somewhere and I think the end result is acceptable and I can only improve from here, hopefully. Oh, you want to see it? Right, okay. I'm pretty happy with that for a first attempt. A little bit more work to do, 
along the base, but they're still ballast to come all the way along the track. I need to also fill in these missing ties, sleepers. And then once they're done, ballast over it and the ballast will go right down and just overlap those little rock sections. So you won't see that white down there. For the top, um, my wife wasn't happy with how I had painted this wall and platform, so she redid that. So as you can, I'm sure you'll agree that is way better than what I did. So she's desperate to get on with the, the grass at the top and the monument or whatever we're going to put up there, some flags. I did fix my static grass machine. I just put the batteries, the original batteries back in. It seems to be working again. I'm going to be on the lookout for a better static grass applicator. But overall, I am pretty happy with that, to be honest. And hopefully, as I said, I can only improve from here. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I know it was quite a task, but it didn't cost a lot of money. Some offcuts from the styrofoam, some really cheap paint, a little cheap Dremel tool, some glue. That's about it. Oh, and the gravel. The gravel was like $2 from a Dollarama dollar store, pound store. And I think it looks pretty good. But what do I know? Okay, up next, I really want to get onto the budget Magna Rail system. I think I've got all the parts I need, so make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, be notified, and I'll see you all soon. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.